In 2013, the Kentucky Derby winner Animal Kingdom raced to the finish line and took home the Dubai title with jockey Joey Rosario behind the reins. In 2012, Great Britain's Monterosa rode to victory with Mikael Barcelona. In 2011, the Dubai World Cup title was claimed by Japan's Victor Pisa, which was ridden by jockey Mirko de Muro. In 2010, Brazil's Gloria de Campeão was the first to win the Dubai World Cup at Maidan with TJ Pereira. They are just a few of the names that made history in the world's richest horse race. With a purse value of over 100 million dirhams or 27.25 million US dollars, World Cup night hosts some of the world's most blue-blooded racehorses annually on the last Saturday of March. The Dubai World Cup is the final race of the night, created by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai since the event's inception in 1996. In addition to the racing action, other elements that contribute to the excitement include the Jaguar style stakes and the closing concert that will feature American superstar Jennifer Lopez this year. Now in its 19th edition, it has grown into a much anticipated sports, fashion and social event in the international horse racing calendar. Since 2010, the Dubai World Cup is now staged annually at the Maidan Racecourse, a unique purpose-built facility that best shows off what has long been known as the sport of kings. Keeping its racetracks in perfect condition at all times is critical according to the track superintendent. Armed with a lifelong experience at the races that began at the age of 12 in Arlington Park in the U.S., Mexican-born Javier Baraja says maintaining the pristine race courses require a year-round of dedication, attention to detail, and hard work. It's pretty difficult trying to please all the trainers from different parts of the world. You know, because in, the, in the States, they want firmer ground, and in England, which it rains almost every day, or in Europe, they want softer ground, so I have to have a happy medium where they both would like uh, the ground. Considering it's a, it's a desert and everything, uh, our turf course is not quite as hard as the racetracks in the States and it's not quite as soft as the racetracks in England, so it's kind of a happy medium, I hope. Maidan has two racetracks, the 1,750-meter all-weather surface and the 2,400-meter turf track. The all-weather surface is a synthetic course that is a mix of wax, sand, and carpet fibers, which are sensitive to temperature changes. It varies the consistency of the track that causes the horses to run faster or slower and provide a good bounce. The turf track is comprised of two types of grasses, the summer grass or Bermuda and the winter grass or rye. The combination of these two is essential in ensuring the tracks are nothing less than perfect throughout the year. If we have the Bermuda grass, it'll, it'll get too dull and yellow during the, the winter, so we have the, the winter grass to make it nice and green and tall. What's really important because of the Bermuda, it, uh, it grows underground, it goes, like I said, 12 inches a foot deep the roots keep growing where the horse has better support and better hold of the of the turf course. If we only had the rye grass, then they would just get all ripped off and uh, it would go to sh shreds right away. And, and the, the, the summer grass really helps the winter grass for, and, and actually helps the horse uh, with better support. The race course in Maidan is still pretty young at five years old. When it was younger, Javier says they used to water the ground about an hour a day. Now it has considerably reduced to between 10 to 20 minutes daily, depending on the temperature and the number of horses training the following day. The massive 67 million square feet racecourse district is also maintained with recycled water, which reduces the requirement for the amount of fertilizer used, says the track boss. With a team of nearly 70 people, they maintain the grounds daily and also keep a close watch for fungus and weed growth. It's quite busy, especially like this morning we had horses trained on it, so we got to come in and take the dead grass out, 
or the, where the horses hit and ruin the grass, we have to remove that so it doesn't get all yellow and then come in and, and throw grass seed and sand back into the divot so the grass will grow freshly again within two, three weeks. We are having training every day going, I mean, we had the turf races uh, in, uh, in January uh, through March and now we're getting ready for the World Cup, but we're still training on the turf. We're still training on the training track turf and we're still, horses still training on the main turf course where we have to come in and keep it repaired and ready, you know, for the, for the World Cup.